can uh, continue with the topic uh, from humans. Right before that, uh, I think there was a question on the uh, midterm format. I think I shared a uh, YouTube link uh, for the previous semester uh, solution, a uh, midterm solution discussion. I think from there you can see an uh, example of a uh, midterm question as well uh, and uh, the expectation. And uh, there's also a question on the mode of the midterm that will be modular, modular. So uh, it's one and a half hour. Um, so I will take, you know, uh, maybe two or three major questions. Uh, each each question, I think it's a modular form. I think you understand, isn't it? Um, at this point, okay. At this point, if any latest updates, I will update on Monday. But uh, so get yourself ready, okay. Um, Right, and uh, still same mode, uh, pen and pencil, and then scan and submit. Of course, the distribution of the uh, questions will be made through uh, Google Classroom, okay? Uh, and then submission also through uh, GC. Okay, um, right. I think it's good uh, to, to look at. But uh, of course, I mean, obviously at the university level, sometimes people say, it, you know, uh, because um, um, that's only a guide. Huh? Uh, sometimes you know, your knowledge, uh, you can use your knowledge, understanding, uh, not only uh, discussion in class uh, for you to be able to answer the questions. OK, uh, some questions are general, some are very specific, so get yourself uh, you know, update yourself, inshallah. You'll be able to answer. Okay, so, um, right. Uh, how many students now we have? Okay. Right. Uh, okay, some of you also, you request as a guest, huh? Okay, not an issue. Okay, now I will start presenting. On the previous class. Okay, today, uh, continuation eh, of documents topic. Okay. Okay, right. So you can see, I think uh, we stop here at the uh, e procurement. Any questions so far on uh, procurements or general question also? Huh? You can uh, answer or you can ask. Sir, I would like to ask. Yes. Um, is there like a like check and balance check system and to determine if the contracts are awarded fairly? Is there any what? Check and balance system. Okay, uh, that uh, contract is reasonable value, huh? And awarded fairly. And awarded fairly. Oh, okay. Okay, so that, that's why you need to understand the, uh, the, the procurement regime, okay? Um, there are direct quotation and uh, tender huh? so basically this uh, uh, mode of procurements is basically to achieve that huh? and then i will discuss on the principles okay so all these need to be translated into uh, the procedures and the process of the awarding uh, the contracts okay um, when you mentioned about fair for instance uh, of course fairness fair here means um, uh, if it is tender, I think it's quite uh, straightforward because um, the, the one who are eligible uh, to enter companies or, or suppliers that are eligible to enter into the bidding process, okay, because of uh, track record, okay, they have the experience. Because uh, 
I think as we discussed earlier, so they have to, uh, if it is a government projects, generally they have that, uh, you know, holding the license huh? um, that they can enter into a certain amount of uh, projects, a certain level of projects, I think, uh, based on their track records. So that's uh, in terms of capabilities. And then, um, and then the, break, the bidding process, okay, so I think the secrecy, uh, all that uh, procedures uh, is, is, is in the uh, procurement process, okay. Uh, I'm not, in this class, I don't uh, really discuss on the details of the procurement process, okay. But I think you can have that as your general uh, reading, uh, okay, how to make sure that uh, fairness should be, uh, should be uh, achieved. Okay, uh, because uh, of course, in one hand, uh, government would have to, uh, you know, to to make sure that if they award a contract to a company, so the company is have that capabilities, okay, uh, to to complete the projects. So that one, the other is um, at the same time uh, they have to also uh, benefit from competitive price. Uh, that, that's why the bidding process must take place. Huh? Uh, through uh, the fairness also we can, uh, okay, I think that can be achieved through, uh, now they use computerized system, uh, uh, the selection and then uh, the bidding process. Of course, the decision is made by uh, the tender committee, okay, uh, but with the with the given criteria, okay. Um, so, by right, with the, you know, if, if they can uphold uh, the, uh, procurement principles, okay, in terms of fairness, competition, so definitely that will bring uh, value for money to uh, government agencies or to government as a whole. Okay, um, so I think the, the procurement process itself, uh, uh, in terms of fairness, uh, in, terms of, in terms of fairness, uh, should be embedded. I think uh, maybe uh, another way to look at it is, uh, okay, is there a risk that uh, this will be undermined. Okay, uh, that's uh, ongoing challenges in all internal controls. Huh? Uh, I think globally, uh, there is uh, universal problems. Uh, that's why uh, the systems huh, uh, must make sure that uh, the segregation of duties, independence, uh, all that must be observed. Okay, uh, so that's why uh, transparency, for particularly for those individuals involved, there must be, if there are, you know, if there is a conflict of interest, they must withdraw from uh, the, 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 the process, uh, the procurement process, all these need to be observed. Okay. Challenges always there, it's not easy to, uh, you know, uh, fully address. Okay, because um, I think uh, we did mention one of the major risks in uh, internal control is collusion, uh, collusion. Okay, where all these parties should be, there, are, there should be segregation of duties, but uh, somehow uh, collusion will undermine uh, this, uh, you know, separation of duties. Uh, so that can pose uh, risk. I mean, as a, I put it in a, in a very simple, uh, something that we can understand. Eh? Okay, I hope I can answer your question, uh, Sister Ahana. Yes, sir, thank you. Okay, so right. Um, right, uh, we discussed on e-procurements. Okay, I think so what definitely one of them is to achieve uh, the efficiency yeah? and fairness and to keep, uh, because uh, through e-procurement, the selection, yeah? so they can basically, uh, to make sure that those who enter into bidding, uh, their application will be considered huh, for awarding process, okay, equally. So all bidders must be treated equally, okay. I think uh, through uh, this technology, uh, somehow that should be achieved. Huh? Okay, so we continue. Issues in procurements, weaknesses in procurements, purchases, they are not sourced based on best value, okay. So in other words, maybe there are weaknesses in the contracts, weaknesses in selection of suppliers, weaknesses in specifications, okay, can lead to this. Huh? 
Equipments received are not utilized or underutilized over purchases of equipments. Okay, that can be an issue. Huh? Okay, you buy, let's say, uh, acorns, right? Sometimes over specification also, huh? over specification, over specs. Maybe you, you know, you should buy, uh, let's say, acorns. Uh, one horsepower is enough. But then the purchases is two horsepower. Uh, so why two? Why not one? Because two is more expensive than one. Uh, so these are, you know, can be an issue. Um, let's say buildings, okay? Uh, utilize or underutilize buildings. Uh, sometimes in Malaysia also we face this problem, uh, overcapacity of buildings. Uh, there are so many big buildings, but the rental and the use are very low. Okay, maybe 50% of the big buildings are being utilized. So that is, uh, but uh, sometimes building is quite difficult huh? because, uh, you know, you talk about it's not, sometimes the use is not immediate, maybe after two, three years, they can be uh, fully utilized. Okay. Another example, uh, there are so many, yeah? uh, okay, utilized or underutilized. But because if it is underutilized, one is, uh, of course, uh, you know, government income costs, okay, very high cost if it is underutilized. Uh, and then there's, there'll be also opposite cost. But if the products are, if the products or goods are consumables, okay, underutilization, you know, because they can be obsolete, damaged, so high, high risk, okay, more, more risk in that sense. Huh? Okay, uh, equipment supplied not in accordance to original specifications, poor quality, frequent breakdowns, obsolete, non-systematic or improper storage, okay. Uh, so many things there, okay, at least, uh, the easy one, uh, I think we discussed that, huh? if it is not properly maintained or properly kept. And, uh, okay, but possibly that's more for consumables. Uh, but uh, for buildings, uh, for big uh, 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 contracts, okay, let's say, um, uh, if you look at military, yeah, military can be uh, a fighter jet, it can be submarines, can be, uh, you see, uh, uh, what do you call it, machineries, huh? Then uh, not following original specifications. Uh, okay, there are two issues there. Okay, one is of course monitoring. I think we'll discuss this later. Monitoring of the execution. Eh? Okay, uh, not properly monitored. That's one uh, that can uh, pay. Uh, and, and then uh, on top of that, payment is already made. Uh, then uh, it will be a loss to the government. Eh? Because, uh, it, but in any case, I think in uh, contracts, it's always. Uh, uh, a grace period, huh? grace period that uh, uh, that the, the suppliers, if they don't follow contracts, they can always need to rectify. Yeah? And also, I think government can have that, uh, they have these uh, withholdings of uh, some of the money, I think over uh, 18 months or something, okay, that uh, they, they hold the money, uh, let's say the, the project's worth 1 billion, okay, 5%, uh, percent, let's say 5 or 10%, okay, they can hold like 50 million, yeah? Uh, so that 50 million somehow uh, can, uh, you know, can force uh, the suppliers to do ratifications to make sure that they follow uh, this, the contracts. And, and uh, not only that, I think even the contracts, uh, the specifications, product specifications, normally product specifications, as mentioned before, product specifications have been uh, uh, provided by independent party. Uh, of, uh, independent party or independent consultant, uh, or even the government uh, personnel, uh, if they have the expertise uh, to develop the specifications of the services, or the equipments, or, or the buildings, or the systems. Okay, uh, but the challenge is uh, to how that specifications are uh, basically uh, demo, uh, complete. Uh, complete. Okay, there are no loopholes. I think we discussed that later. Now that's also a challenge. Okay, uh, because uh, you will. They, they can only know that uh, the, the specifications complete uh, during the executions, okay? Uh, let's say the construction, uh, during the constructions or buildings, okay? Or at the uh, commissioning as well as uh, transfer. Uh, then they know, okay, is it working or not, okay? Uh, if it is not working, there's, there must be loopholes. But if you look at the uh, uh, contract specification, it's all complete, okay? So in other words, uh, loopholes can also done at the uh, contract level, even before the contract level. Uh, so all this knowledge is very important. Okay, that's why I think government 
because uh, you know if there are loopholes, it, it makes the, the purchases, the procurement a bit more costly. Okay, uh, I think somehow this is not considered as a problem, but because the government also put a cap uh, on variation order, okay, uh, I think 10% or 20%, they put a cap. But depending also, okay, uh, the tolerance that uh, the government can accommodate, I think government to government, they are different. Uh, maybe for Malaysian government, they put a cap. But there are other governments, uh, you know, during the good time, okay, in a uh, way, you know, very rich country, so they, there is no cap, as long as they can demonstrate, uh, because sometimes government also, they want to show uh, you know, through their procurements, the adoption of advanced technology. Okay, uh, so sometimes variations, uh, specifications uh, of products uh, keep on changing, okay, uh, to reflect the new technology. Uh, this also can be an issue, but uh, yeah, I think in Malaysia we put a cap, okay. Shortage of experienced officer to handle it, okay, uh, there's also, I mean, that through training, that's why, let's say, in the case of uh, fighter jet, huh? Uh, or even uh, we have this uh, submarine, uh, uh, Scopine, okay, uh, purchased from France. So we have uh, the, the, the personnel, okay, people that are trained to make sure that they can uh, look after the, the, the equipments. Non-compliance to rules, regulation and policies. Equipment procured at a much higher cost than market value. Improper payment made for equipment is not supplied. Payment made, but maintenance jobs are not carried out and insufficient budget for maintenance. Okay, for the first one, I think uh, it, it's happening. It happened. I think if you look at the audit reports, huh, the Auditor General reports from year to year, uh, they can see that uh, sometimes government are charged in a, uh, at a very high price than the market price okay, of the products. So uh, it's real. It's something happened. Okay, payment made by... But maintenance jobs are not carried out. Okay, so uh, I think almost all, all government uh, services, uh, product, uh, buildings, okay, need maintenance. Okay, and that that maintenance need budget. Huh? Otherwise, it will uh, undermine or will shorten uh, the lifespan of the facilities uh, of the equipments. Okay, uh, let's say for motor vehicles, for instance, maintenance are very important. Even computer, uh, even office, okay, maintenance. Uh, itself is a, a, a job by itself okay that requires procurement uh, process by the government and uh, weaknesses and irregular irregularities uh, involving work and service procurement delay in signing the contract uh, work done or services rendered not in accordance with the original scope okay uh, low quality on works or service rendered unsatisfactory okay uh, work maintenance Okay, not uh, slow work progress, abandoned projects. Uh, okay, this also, I think some of these, uh, you know, uh, cases are being reported uh, in audit, uh, by Auditor General reports. Okay. Underlying reason, okay, lack of proper planning. Uh, okay, uh, both, okay, and uh, definitely, definitely uh, government agencies. Uh. Planning here can also, I think if you look at the projects, uh, there, there must be, I think, procurement also, there must have deadline, okay, uh, milestones uh, of the progress, okay, particularly if you look at, I think, major uh, major projects normally involve constructions, uh, uh, so let's say uh, currently there's a new project uh, of uh, 5G, right, uh, so the infrastructure need to be uh, implemented, uh, I think, within two years, uh, okay, so there must be proper planning in terms of milestones, okay, the progress, uh, uh, the target progress, uh, so need to be uh, done, need to be made, and also observed. I think uh, that's why it's very important. All these uh, time must be embedded. Uh, time is the essence of the contract. Okay, so that's why uh, if you look at uh, in the contracts of uh, uh, construction contracts or service contracts, okay, uh, a delay is a is is a key word. Huh? Is a, so who caused the delay? Okay, uh, that, that is very important. Uh, who caused the delay in the progress of the of the uh, service provision? Is it the suppliers or is it the client or the government? That's why documentation is key. Okay, uh, these are the role of uh, accountants, engineers, uh, the professionals. Okay, uh, and those who are involved in negotiations, they must keep the documentation okay up to date. Okay, even 
uh, okay, the emails, the communication between parties must be recorded properly because uh, the issue of who caused the delay. Because delay means, delay means what? In the contract. Delay means, class? Not complex. Delay in progress. Delay means? Costly. Delay means money, okay? <laughs> because there is penalty for delay. Eh? In the contract always, there is a clause of penalty for delay. So who caused the delay will pay, right? And then generally they will put clearly uh, the, the penalty. They say 8,000 per day, okay? So who will pay? The one who caused the delay. How they know uh, who caused the delay? Through documentation. That's why every meeting must be documented. Okay, who caused the delay? So that's why observing uh, the progress of the contracts is key. Uh, that, because it's already embedded in, in the contracts, okay? In the service contracts, in the whatever. Because at the end, if, uh, uh, who caused the delay will pay, okay, handsomely. Uh, if the, uh, both sides, okay, the, the client, uh, as well as the suppliers. Okay, that's why uh, but this happen. Uh, it can happen. Okay, if there is delay, that's why documentation. No? Uh, people like you, since you take PSA, yeah? so once in the future uh, you get involved in all this contract management, so make sure uh, complete documentation. Yeah? So don't delay. Don't cause the delay. Okay, they must have. Uh, they must always respond to to all queries. Okay, to make sure that. You shouldn't pay any penalty for delay. Okay, so you must manage. Okay. Uh, secondly, lack of transparency in financial information system and contracting operations. Okay, that can also cause uh, to make the government uh, procurement become costly. Lack of alignment of responsibilities among key officials in managing awards and oversight of contracts. Okay, I think that's why key communication. Generally, I think. Uh, main uh, 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 contract uh, contracting parties, okay, they have a platform, uh, a continuous monitoring, okay, meet committee to make sure that technical committee, okay, a financial overall management, and then they have uh, uh, what do you call it? If it is a joint venture, okay, they have a joint venture uh, uh, meetings and others to make sure that uh, the progress uh, the, uh, in, is made. Uh. Uh, for construction, definitely there is. There, a discussion on progress. There are issues, operational issues, that can be addressed at the at the uh, 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 at the construction manager level. But there are also issues uh, that need support at the higher level. Accountability and performance requirements are not clearly spelled. I think uh, I discussed that. Huh? So make sure it's not easy to to uh, to keep. Okay, uh, uh, one is of course the contract must be complete. Okay, the particularly the product specification uh, specifications. But in generally, in uh, that's why uh, there are tender process or uh, all procurement process. They must decide. Uh, they must dictate uh, the specifications of the products. Huh? Uh, so is that clearly uh, spelled? Okay, there are no loopholes. But for construction, they call it BQ, huh? a bill of quantity uh, for each part of the constructions. Okay, so that reflect the requirements of the quantity. Of course, the, the pricing uh, it depends on. The suppliers, okay. There's, if they can, uh, the, the lower they can go uh, within the reasonable band, uh, that is uh, which increase their chance uh, to win the awards. Huh? So um, this can be a challenge, okay. Uh, and then the reporting. Uh, generally, I think uh, the the requirements of reporting. That's why there is daily reporting huh? to make sure that they know the progress of the projects. Huh? Lack of ethics among the procurement workforce possible, okay. As I mentioned earlier, collusions, okay. Um, selections, the selection process. So all key individuals in the in the uh, procurement process, okay, including the clerks, including those who handle the documents, they are all important. Okay, I need to. I, I mean, basically, uh, you know, the control should be there as well, including the the values huh, of the workforce to make sure that. They comply with all the requirements. Lack of skill and training of procurement workforce. Okay, lack of guidance for managing the contracts, especially cost management. Right now, we move on to uh, procurement best practice. Uh, ensuring the procurement management process is conducted in accordance with stipulated regulations. Okay, I think uh, regulations as well. Uh, these regulations can be okay. Uh, 
because even if you look at buildings, uh, there are regulations that we're going to need to comply. Now, on top of that, uh, in the procurement process itself, okay, through the must comply with the regulations. Proper planning to determine what to procure, when and why and how, market study, ensure that budget is located for the procurement categories. Okay, there must be budget, uh, enough budget as well. Ensure the procurement method used is in accordance to the threshold value limit. Okay, so I think the third point is that if it is, uh, the procurement method should be tender, so it should be respected. Okay, so if it is, uh, if uh, the threshold uh, requires tender process, then they shouldn't use uh, direct quotation. Okay, uh, so that must be observed. Quotation notice is clear and complete. Uh, opening quotation committee must be appointed in writing. Quotation valuation report must be prepared. Okay, uh, proper maintenance of all procurement and contract files. Okay, so generally that's why I think this requires transparency. Yeah? Uh, that uh, all parties involved in the contracts, okay, the uh, the uh, submission should be processed and should be given uh, due considerations. Okay, uh, for them to be assessed uh, for the uh, as part of uh, uh, winning the contracts. And uh, that's all these, I think, as we discussed, uh, will answer that question. Uh, how to make sure that uh, uh, fair and uh, good value for the government uh, in terms of the procurement, awarding the contracts. Enhancing the knowledge and skill handling procurement, conducting periodical trainings, okay, and uh, to make sure that they can, uh, okay, uh, uh, live, live up to, this, to the expectations. Uh, to observe the because uh, procedures, the process, uh, uh, maybe the, the communications uh, to make sure that uh, the, the documents being prepared accordingly so that uh, the, the tender process or the selection process will be smooth. Okay, uh, that uh, and also uh, the, the if it is involved tender committee, the tender committee, the, the members of tender committee have enough information uh, accessible to all the information requires. Uh, before they be able to to uh, to make decisions, okay. Job rotation in various aspect of procurements, okay. I think that's uh, critical, lah, uh, in uh, in the part of selection of duties, okay. So job rotations, right? Uh, enhance the work system and capability of personnel, okay. Uh, internal auditors must play their role in assessing the procurement governance, okay. I think that's. Uh, but I think major part uh, of uh, 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 because procurements uh, sometimes and also getting the services from the third party yeah, uh, the definitely is part of, uh, of uh, uh, internal audits as well as uh, auditor general works. Uh. Later on, we will discuss on performance audit. OK, uh, so this also applicable. Uh. They call it procurement audits and uh, that mostly that also will cover under performance audit. So performance audit conducted by internal auditors as well as uh, a mandated audit uh, uh, by the auditor general. Okay, so procurement is one of the key areas. Uh, okay, for them to conduct performance audit, all ministries, departments, and agencies must ensure that all information related to procurement must be updated. Uh, they haven't have the system. Uh, government procurement information system. Okay, procurement audit to provide the assurance the procurement and contracting activities and process are complied with. Then uh, following the government policies to ensure that good works services can and will continuously perform to satisfaction. Okay, uh, in other words, uh, okay, to make sure that what being, uh, I mean, the, 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 the work, uh, the supplies, okay, the services follow uh, can meet what is required in the contracts, huh? and then can uh, uh, fulfill okay the requirements of the services, right? So uh, definitely, these uh, internal auditors have that role huh, to make sure that. Uh, and on top of that, definitely uh, there are other ways of uh, to make sure that uh, you know uh, these services and, and and products follow the specifications. Okay, that's why I think in the in the construction, definitely they call it commissioning, eh? commissioning process. Okay, uh, to make sure that uh, the, the quality of the buildings, okay, uh, the machines in the buildings. Uh, if you look at the buildings, uh, there are uh, civil engineering works, there are M and &E works, okay, uh, mechanical and electrical works. So all these need to be tested to make sure that they follow the specifications. 
okay, the size of the room, the height of the rooms, okay. Uh, if you look at uh, the the aircon system, the aircon system is very key in the building, okay. Make sure that the, it is functioning well and uh, and cost uh, effective, okay. Uh, so uh, all these need to be managed properly, okay. Uh, so how this can be done? Okay, the process of commissioning uh, definitely uh, is, is 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 a process by itself, okay. In other words, checking uh, of, the, of the work of the suppliers to make sure that they follow all the contracts and they can fulfill the the the, the objective of the procurements. Okay, sometimes, uh, okay, at the same time as I mentioned earlier, uh, you may not be able even to meet uh, because sometimes contract also may not be complete, uh, but uh, it, it can boils down to the uh, to the the expertise uh, of the consultants of the of the contractors. To make sure that they they can deliver with value for money, right? Uh, so it's a complex process, but yeah, if everyone, everybody works uh, professionally and to deliver a value for a value for money, I think that's that's what it is. Okay. Right. The scope encompasses the overall aspect of procurement process till the closure of the account. Okay. In line with the Circular 2012. A effective procurement system, a procurement regulatory framework should address all government contracts regardless of the funding source. Transparency is important to assure trust and confidence in the procurement system. Effective and fair procedural rules are important in open competitive bidding. I think uh, these, are, these are some examples uh, of the key criteria uh, to make sure that, that fairness and uh, uh, that government will receive a good uh, uh, procurement. Uh. A government official engaged in purchasing should be independent from vendors, bidders, prospective bidders, interested parties, politicians, and political appointees. Okay, so uh, you can see that clearly. Okay, even the officials, uh, I think at all level, including the clerks up to the uh, uh, you know top management that involved in these procurements, they should be independent. Okay, why do we need transparent procurement system? Okay, transparent system promote efficiency. And minimize the uh, threat of corruption. Uh, transparency encourage a more competitive environment to attain value for money in public service provisions. Okay, uh, so I think uh, in URE or in IUM also uh, last time, if you if you can come to campus, you can check uh, at the, uh, the finance unit, finance division. I think in terms of uh, those who winning the awards, uh, uh, the jobs, they will list down. Uh, they put on the on the what do you call it? Uh, I don't think they put on the website. But last time they put in the uh, outside, uh, outside of the office, okay, that everybody can see how much they beat and how they win. Uh. Right, procurement process and value for money considerations. Uh, achieving value for money covers overall cycles of procurement stages, uh, right from awarding. Okay, so to award means to to give the job, right? Uh, so in my, the award here means the suppliers will receive letter of award. Huh? Initially, if, if they are one of the interested parties or, or the winning uh, uh, parties or companies, okay, they will be given letter of intent. And then once they they win the project, so they are given letter of award. Okay, a very uh, that's a part of uh, before the the signing of the contracts. Huh? So the awarding, so uh, the tender process is basically the selection process. Huh? Before they move to the uh, to the awarding uh, stages, once you re they receive the letter of award, it's basically they receive letter of offer, huh? letter of offer to provide the services. It's like a PO purchase order. Huh? Uh, so at that point, it's very strong. They accept, they enter into contract, then it's, they become contracting parties. Okay, so then uh, uh, everybody can sue everybody, you know, to make sure that at the end the product should be delivered. Okay. Awarding process also very important because there is there they can control uh, the the pricing as well as um, uh, the pricing at least the pricing eh? and also the track records of the uh, companies that we winning the, the contracts. So of course you're not you're not going uh, if it is a uh, hundred million or ten million or twenty million project you not give you will not give a project to to uh, there there is a remark made. Eh? Uh, a company uh, under the three company uh, or one ringgit or two ringgit company. Uh, it's okay to one ringgit or two ringgit company, but a uh, huge amount of uh, asset. Okay, but uh, what it means that okay, without experience, uh, then the company give it, uh, winning the the jobs uh, that should be avoided. So that is a award awarding process. 
Then the initial progress, uh, commissioning and handover of supply, service and works. So all these progress need to be uh, managed yeah, so that the government can achieve value for money. Okay, so for instance, like uh, in the in doing the progress, uh, so during, during the execution, uh, that is where the monitoring is very important. Uh. So generally, the, of course, in the construction process, uh, there is a, a, what do you call it, a, a PMO, uh, a project management company, okay, uh, and then uh, with the co contractors, okay, uh, and then with the contractor, with the, all the suppliers, I think that's how it works. So everybody must uh, basically observe uh, uh, their, their, their contracting parties uh, or their suppliers. Okay, to comply with the contracts uh, because at the end, a uh, progress payment is made based on the uh, progress uh, achievements. Huh? Uh, so that, that that's how important. So in other words, if there is uh, 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 loopholes, huh? weaknesses in the claims, uh, so need to be uh, addressed properly. So th that's why uh, because if you talk about uh, a product uh, or buildings, uh, uh, mega projects. Huh? If you think about uh, what the mega projects that happen, uh, they say we talk about uh, uh, airports. Uh, KLIA, for instance, of course, it's been so many years now. I think KLIA airports also need re require new uh, renovations, okay, because to update the system and others. So, uh, uh, so, so that uh, you know the progress to make sure that they follow. Otherwise, if, if they cannot follow the contracts, okay, there is there is a high chance that the, 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 the buildings cannot be used, okay? For instance, like hospitals, okay? Hospitals, one of the key areas in the hospitals is uh, to make sure that, I think, air management, uh, you know, air management, clear, uh, hygiene, uh, hygienic management in the, in the building. It started from the construction, okay? If you look at air, uh, of course, uh, you, the sharing of air, 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 air flow in, in the building is very critical in the hospital. Okay, not only the materials, uh, uh, the, the wall materials, uh, but the managing the airflow. Because, you know, uh, in the hospitals, if you talk about air, air flows, uh, what is the risk, basically? The risk in the, in, in the hospitals. If there are free flow of, of air across, uh, you know, all units in the, in the, in the hospitals. Air, you know air? Disease can spread. Exactly, you know, you talk about, uh, now we talk about virus, we talk about bacteria, okay? They are transmitting through, through air, right? Uh, so that's why air management is very important, airflow management is very important, okay? And so, uh, so that's why complying, uh, uh, that's why need to be monitored properly, uh, right from the beginning, right? We did the construction uh, process to make sure that all these being observed. And then, uh, okay, uh, the the materials and others. These are during the progress, okay, to make sure that they follow the contract. Otherwise, if they don't, then at the end, can uh, if they uh, uh, during the transfer, okay, the handover, and uh, after the checking, the building can be can be used as hospital or not? That's the question. If they cannot be used as hospital, then it's a big waste. Okay, uh, uh, that's one question. Another example last time in Kela E two. Huh? In KLI 2, uh, there was a delay in uh, commission in, in handover, okay, uh, to the to the port authority. And there was a delay in the commission uh, uh, handover, and also by right KLI 2 should should already started the operation, but there was a delay. I think there was one concern on the runway, okay, the runway of the of KLI 2, where there was a uh, okay, there was a concern on the quality of the of the airways. Uh, so if the uh, the the airways cannot be used because not always the contract and specifications okay because you are talking about international communities uh, aligned communities where they observe they want to know but they want to land their plane they make sure that uh, the, the airway the, the runway must be uh, follow the, the international standards okay so out of that because uh, there was a delay i think there was a negotiation on this so that's the question if during the progress of the contracts uh, they don't follow the standards okay what is required then there is a risk that the facilities cannot be used, okay, and government spend billion of dollars. So that's why if you talk about value for money, it's not only, uh, you know, the whole process of the procurement need to be observed uh, to make sure that they can achieve value for money. Okay, contract specifications should be comprehensive and complete, okay. I think we discussed, I discussed that. 
right? Of course, they need expertise. Normally, they engage with the consultants, or even the government have the expertise, they can engage them. Eh? Loopholes will increase costs, okay? Uh, because that will lead to variation of order, uh, variation orders. Uh, and awarding of contracts, competitive price at certain level of quality, complying with product and work specifications, and to award to supply with relevant track records and capabilities. At initial stage and progress of service provision and works, monitoring and certifying progress claim made by complying to contract specifications in terms of quality, quantity, and price for each stage of progress. Okay, payment to suppliers made only when claims comply to contract specifications. Okay, so that's why uh, there is a, a, a claim uh, certifications. Huh? So you require independent uh, person to certify. Okay, so of course uh, the suppliers. Okay, uh, there, there should be no. Uh, so these are need to be observed. Huh? So I think the role of accountants at that point. Okay, uh, or internal auditor to make sure their segregation of duties need is very is very critical. Huh? Then uh, the the, the 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 facilities okay can be delivered that's one and also the cost can be managed uh, by the uh, for the government otherwise there are cases of delay projects these are not uh, it's happening uh, from time to time I, I think generally in in, in the auditor report uh, they they will highlight these problems so the issue is they should this should be avoided right from the beginning or during the uh, construction process. Commissioning and handover to ensure procurement meet contract specifications. Okay, so all these will lead to a value for money. All right, and then we move on to uh, NPM and procurement relation. So these are uh, uh, what you call it, uh, as we discussed. Huh? We talk about outsourcing. So just now, a general discussion. Okay, on uh, on the procurement. So there are outsourcing. I think we discussed. I think in these topics uh, that we can cover this outsourcing process. Privatization also as part of uh, okay to improve uh, government uh, efficiency and effectiveness with, by engaging the private sector. Competitive tendering, okay, these are term used uh, in the UK yeah, uh, to make sure to get the uh, still uh, uh, to get the services uh, from the uh, private sector. And lastly, we talk about public private partnership. Okay, uh, these are PFI. They call it PFI. And uh, I think in Malaysia, we apply this uh, public private partnership uh, from large scales to uh, to PFI. Okay, so the one, uh, the latest mode is is PFI, uh, public private finance initiative. Okay, so so far, any questions? I think we'll discuss on this uh, PPP uh, as a separate topics as well. Any questions? Before I move on. So uh, yeah, so what building is this? Right A. Which campus? Gomba. Gomba. Gomba sir. You still remember uh, after one year not coming to campus? Oh yeah, you are on campus. <laughs> How many, uh, any of you only one year never reach campus? Or all of you on campus? Oh, all of you on campus. Eh? I'm So one year. Oh, one year you never go to the mosque. Huh? <laughs> go to. <laughs> okay, so yeah, of course we, we benefit from this uh, complex, a uh, huge complex, uh, IUM. Okay, uh, this basically a uh, part of the results of the procurement process. Huh? I think last time I think they spent what two billion. Okay, uh, in uh, late 1990s. Okay, to build this uh, complex. So two billion uh, twenty years ago, huh? or thirty years ago, twenty years ago. Okay, so how much that the current value now? Huh? Right. Uh, so the how important it is, huh? good procurement process. Okay, uh, to make sure that the facilities can deliver the value. Okay. Okay. I think I reserve uh, your analysis, your comment, huh? uh, because but uh, our IOM complex uh, is an example. Okay. Not, not only that, I think uh, the, the, the design of the facility, okay, I think uh, we use uh, Sp uh, Spanish, isn't it? Spanish design. Uh, so you can see that uh, sometimes procurement also it relates to government policy, yeah? Up, uh, state of the art at that time. Huh? I think uh, quite nice in terms of, you know, if it is 
view, right? A nice uh, campus. Okay, any questions? Any question? 10 minutes, okay? Uh, so you can study for midterm. Um, yeah, weekends, long weekends. You can uh, study also, right? Uh, so all the best. I uh, will see you inshallah on Monday. Uh, we'll continue with the new with this uh, PPP topics. Okay, so with that, uh, I will end this uh, with Wabilai Tawib Hidayah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa wa barakatuh. Salam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.